In this item I will explain you how to calculate the minimum and maximum airspeed of an aircraft at steady horizontal flight. Now this is a fairly straightforward procedure if we start with the equations of motion for this specific situation which states lift is equal to weight and thrust is equal to drag. If we start with the first equation of motion for a steady horizontal flight which states lift is equal to weight then we can write out this equation by expanding the lift relation. Now lift is equal to, to CL times a half rho V squared S and thus this should be equal to the weight. Now we're interested in the airspeed an aircraft can actually achieve. So let's bring this airspeed to the left hand side of the equation and let's bring all the other variables to the other side of the equation. So we obtain that should be equal to 2 over S, a weight over S, 2 over rho and 1 over CL. So this also means that in order to find airspeed we should take the square root of this whole equation weight over S, 2 over rho and 1 over CL. Now we are interested in the minimum airspeed and since we are considering one aircraft weight, one wing surface area, one specific altitude, you can directly see that if you make the CL maximum you will actually obtain minimum airspeed and with this equation we can calculate the minimum airspeed of any given aircraft if we know what the maximum lift coefficient is. So we have just derived the equation for minimum airspeeds which you see here on the screen. Now let's apply it to an actual aircraft. The spirit of St. Louis, Louis which I introduced last time. Now the spirit of St. Louis had a maximum lift coefficient of approximately 1.24 and the maximum mass of this aircraft equals 2237 kilogram which corresponds to about 22.8 kilonewtons. Furthermore it has a wing surface area of 29.6 square meters and let's assume this aircraft is flying at sea level conditions where the air density equals 1.225 kilogram per cubic meter. Filling in the equation gives us a minimum airspeed of 32 meters per second or 114 kilometers per hour. Now it is clear from the equation that aircraft weight has a significant influence on the result since weight is in the square root. Now let's see how slow this aircraft can fly at its minimum weight. Quite a difference isn't it? So a heavier aircraft must fly faster in order to obtain enough lift. So minimum airspeed actually changes during flight when the aircraft is burning fuel and it reduces aircraft weight. Clearly CL Max also plays a role and, and the world of aircraft has significantly evolved since 1927. In order to increase the CL Max aircraft designers introduced high lift devices. These devices are typically either at the trailing edge of the wing or the leading edge of the wing and they increase the curvature of the wing. Thereby they also increase the maximum lift coefficient. Unfortunately they also create additional drag and this is why they are only deployed when slow flying capabilities are needed such as takeoff and landing. More complex flap systems such as the triple slotted flap in the picture give the largest increase of CL max. The Boeing 747 is a nice example of an aircraft using such a system. This aircraft has a maximum lift coefficient of more than 2.0 in the landing configuration. Now complex high lift devices however also have a downside. The main downside being that they are heavy. So you also have to carry this weight during the cruise phase when you actually do not need the high lift devices. And this is why more recent aircraft designs typically show simpler high lift devices. So the maximum lift coefficient may be a little bit smaller than that of the Boeing 747, but this is compensated by the lower weight of the system. Now the Airbus A380 is a nice recent example which you see here on the screen. Now let's have a look at the minimum airspeed in the performance diagram. It is essentially where the power curve stops on the left hand side. Now this concludes my discussion on minimum airspeed and now let's have a look at the other end of the spec spectrum, maximum airspeed. If we already have obtained the performance diagram then we can actually use it to graphically determine the maximum airspeed. 
In steady horizontal flight, of course, thrust must be equal to drag, and otherwise power available must equal power required. So the pilot can select any power available up to the maximum power available. And in order to fly as fast as possible, one must, must of course apply maximum power. So the point where the maximum power available curve intersects with the power required indicates the maximum airspeed. In our specific example, this equals 55 meters per second. And this is actually quite close to what was demonstrated in flight with the real aircraft, 57.7 meters per second. Now, if you do not have this diagram readily available, you can also calculate the maximum airspeed analytically based on the equations of motion. So, the equations of motion for steady horizontal flight are lift is equal to weight and thrust is equal to drag. Now, this second equation you can also multiply with airspeed and by doing that you will obtain power available is power required. And this is the equation we need because we know that for the condition of maximum airspeed we need to apply maximum power available. So, we have maximum power available being equal to power required, and that is equal to drag times airspeed. Now I'm going to apply a little trick here. I'm going to multiply drag with lift divided by lift, of course multiplied with airspeed as well, and lift divided by lift is equal to 1. Now, if I use the first equation, I can write out this as being equal to drag divided by lift, multiplied with weight, and multiplied with airspeed. And drag divided by lift is the same as CD over CL times weight times velocity. So we have advanced a bit now, but we see one equation with four variables. But you should not forget that our lift is equal to weight equation states basically that airspeed should be equal to square root of weight over s, 2 over rho, and 1 over Cl, just like we calculated before and derived for the minimum airspeed. So, essentially, our airspeed is a function of Cl. Um, we also know that the drag coefficient is represented by a parabolic equation, which is the zero lift drag coefficient plus K1 times Cl plus K2 times Cl squared. And again, Cd is thus a function of Cl. So, this CD here and this airspeed are both functions of CL and the aircraft weight we consider constant for one given moment in time. So essentially our equation with on the left hand side a constant maximum power available only consists of one variable which is CL. So we have one equation basically with one unknown. And that is something we can solve. So let's route, route out this equation and see what it brings us. So, maximum power available is equal to CD, and CD was CD0 plus K1 times CL plus K2 CL squared divided by CL multiplied with weight and multiplied with the airspeed equation 2 over rho and 1 over CL. 
So now we have one big equation and let's try to bring everything inside the square root. So instead of this weight in the middle, I can also say, well, that's actually the weight square root and I take the square. It's exactly the same. I can also do that with the left hand side of the equation and state, well, that's actually the square root of the whole thing if I square everything. So based on this, I find that PA max equals the square root of weight to the power 3 divided by S times 2 over rho, still in the square root, times this long equation for the lift drag polar squared divided by CL to the power 3 because I have one CL over here and a CL squared over there. So what gives us this? We have basically a whole set of constants because power available maximum is constant, weight is constant, S is constant, 2 is constant. We consider flight at a specific altitude and thus a specific air density. CD0, K1 and K2 are constants. So all of this is a function of CL. So now let's bring CL to the left hand side of the equation um, and write out the full equation. That will give us the following. We have CD0 plus K1 CL, CL plus K2 CL squared, this whole thing squared, divided by CL to the power 3, and that should be equal to PA max squared times S divided by weight to the power 3 times rho air density divided by 2. So basically, you can take this equation and solve it for CL. Now, I'm not going to do that at this point in time. I'm going to leave that to you to do that as homework for the spirit of St. Louis. And of course, for this aircraft, we already know what all these constants are, so you can try it yourself. Now one thing you should pay attention to is that when you calculate the maximum airspeed, you are basically calculating the intersection of the power required curve and the power available curve. So that will be this point over here. But you should not forget that this point, the left hand side of the power required curve, is actually determined by CL max. And pay attention here, we did not include CL max in our equations. So the equation we derived over here does not know about CL max, and thus basically the drag or power required curve continues upwards like this. So if you find the solution, you will actually find a second CL, which is related to an airspeed lower than the minimum airspeed. So once you found CL, you can calculate airspeed based on the airspeed equation, and you should essentially choose the smallest 
CL because that corresponds to this condition. The other CL corresponds to a theoretical condition at which you cannot fly because you've already exceeded the maximum lift coefficient. So this is how you basically calculate maximum airspeed. One point of attention is for a later lecture that this condition can actually become realistic when we start flying at very high altitudes, but that is for next week. I just showed you how to calculate the maximum airspeed analytically for any kind of aircraft, if we are provided with the aerodynamic data of the aircraft and the power available. Now a very specific aircraft famous for its speed is the SR-71 Blackbird. It holds a speed record for air breathing manned aircraft and it actually reached a maximum speed of 3529.6 km per hour. That is a pretty impressive number. Now that concludes this lecture on calculating maximum and minimum airspeed and we'll see you next time for the calculation of the maximum range of an aircraft.